Hi there. Welcome to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. This podcast is all about creating a community of like-minded individuals who are passionate about the field of health informatics. I hope to share information and advice in topics such as health analytics, digital health, biomedical engineering, and data visualization in healthcare. And in exchange, I would love to hear from you, dear listener, about your experience and interest in this field. You can drop me a line at healthanalyticinsights at gmail.com. And this email, along with any references discussed during this podcast, will be listed in the show notes below. If this resonates with you, don't forget to follow and subscribe to this podcast, as I'll be releasing new episodes bi-weekly. Before we jump into the episode, I want to let you know that I've written a step-by-step guide to help you through the process of securing your first role in health informatics by providing you with concrete examples of what roles to search for, common skills requested by employers, example interview questions, and much more. If this is of interest to you, you can check out the show notes of the episode where I have a link to the ebook below. Now, let's get back into the episode. Welcome, everyone, back to the Health Analytic Insights podcast. I'm so excited to interview Brian Fung, who is a health data architect at Verily, where the mission is to make the world's health data useful so that people enjoy healthier lives. He was formerly an informatics pharmacist at Mayo Clinic during the Plumber Project, where he helped lead the conversion of the antimicrobial stewardship and infection control programs into EPIC. His interests lie within the intersection of informatics, public health, and interoperability. So thanks so much, Brian, for being on the podcast. And we'll just dive into the first question. Can you provide the audience a bit about your background? What were your interests or passions when you were younger? And how have you been able to integrate them into your work today? Yeah. Thank you, Colin, for having me on the podcast. It's super awesome being here. So my background, I'm going to try not to ramble too much, but let me start from the beginning. So a bit of a background about me. I have, I, have, I like to describe myself kind of like a, a nerd or a gamer at heart. I've always loved computers and engineering and just tech stuff growing up. And so naturally, my interest growing up was in like computer programming. And I always thought I was going to be a computer engineer up until college. So I had a background like each year, Maryland, I did C in high school, Oracle, so some of those technical skills. But I transitioned to pharmacy at the end of my college years because of family. And there was no one else in healthcare. My grandma was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And so it was kind of a shift to a completely new field because I was frustrated and I didn't really anything about healthcare. And that led more so to a couple years down the road in pharmacy school to where I found a potential intersection between like some of the things that I loved growing up, which is like technology and specifically informatics and what I was doing at the time for the pharmacy. So I was like, oh, what is this whole pharmacy informatics space and in short when I discovered that there's like a technical component in healthcare it was described to me as like basically the liaison between technical people and clinical people and I was like oh this is interesting and that's kind of how I got started in pharmacy informatics and integrating all my background and interests so that's all there <laughs> nice yeah and that really you know seamlessly transitions to the next question is like at least give us like the 101 about pharmacy informatics, because there might be some people who have heard of health informatics, but they might not know the subset or specialty of pharmacy informatics. Can you talk a bit about what it is and uh, kind of your own career path in this field of pharmacy informatics? Yeah, maybe I'll start very briefly with the, the general career path, which is for those individuals interested in pharmacy informatics, the most traditional standard way nowadays is you go to pharmacy school for four years, mm-hmm. you come out doing a one year general residency. So it's not a specialist, it's just general residency. And then a second residency in pharmacy informatics specifically. So two years of residency, and then you go on and become a informatics pharmacist. So that's the theater pathway, but it's strangely enough, not the most 
common because there's not that many red seas out there. So the more people actually just fall into it. But in terms of what it is, privacy informatics is a subset of clinical informatics. And you can define clinical informatics as working at the intersection of healthcare and technology when it pertains to the provider patient care. So anytime a provider, like a physician, a nurse, a PA is taking care of interacting directly with the patient, you know, there's usually some kind of technology involved. It could be like an EHR, a automated dispensing cabinet where the nurses get minutes out of the machines. There's smart policy where they can administer intravenous medications. So there's always some form of like technology. Mm-hmm. And so that all together is clinical informatics. So when it pertains to medication or things, we, de- we deem it as uh, pharmacy informatics. Do you know if more pharmacy schools are providing courses in pharmacy informatics or is it more so like you graduate and then you kind of specialize, specialize in pharmacy informatics through your, your job? Yeah, that's a great, great question. So pharmacy schools are accredited by this organization, which I can't remember the whole name, it's ACPD, something like Accreditation Council of like Pharmacy Education, something like that, I don't, I don't remember exactly, but there has been like two or three major updates. I think the first one was like in 04, and there was another one in like 2011, there was one in 2016. They have always stated that informatics should be part of the core curriculum for all pharmacists in any pharmacy school. But I can tell you, if you pull any student, any pharmacy school, even in this day and age, they would say, I have no idea what it is. I don't know how to learn more about it. We don't have people that talk more about it. And the, the content is just non-existent. So okay. I don't want to, well, non-existent is probably a little harsh. There are some schools that do a pretty good job of teaching their students about it, but it's still in the minorities, I think. Okay, okay. And along the same lines, what are some like soft and technical skills that someone would need, you know, once they are trying to break into the field of pharmacy informatics? Do you have any like specific recommendations on things that people should maybe try and learn? Yeah, I'll say three, just keep it simple. The first one is anyone that goes into pharmacy informatics, I always say that don't spend your time learning programming languages just to learn it. And the number one thing about an informatic pharmacist that make us valuable in our knowledge in pharmacy workflows. We are pharmacists first. If you don't understand the workflows that a pharmacist does, you know, like taking care of patients, dispensing medication, you're not, you're only a program if you just learn that. So your value comes to having words in that space or having an understanding of what we do as pharmacists. So that's number one, being a good pharmacist. Number two is probably communication. So strangely enough, in informatics viruses, I think the stereotype is like someone sitting on a computer looking at spreadsheets or coding of some sort and not talking one, but, <laughs> but it's very far from that. We, we spend upwards of 50 to 90% of our time actually in meetings and talking with people and talking with either clinical people who don't speak tech or talking with our technical people who just code. So we spend a lot of time interacting with both, both groups or facilitating meetings with both of them in the same place. So the communication is like one of the most important soft skills I can suggest. And then technical skills, surprisingly enough, it is kind of a big bag, but my experience has always been that technical skills like programming, SQL, Python, R, those kind of typical skills are not common. In your Maybe you do reporting, but yeah, so technical skills is plus or minus if you do a informatics pharmacy position that requires otherwise. Those are the three, three kind of skills. Oh, that's a great roundup. And kind of pivoting into the next question is you have your own YouTube channel, which I will also link in the show notes below. How important have side projects been to your career? And I'm thinking even that point that you just talked about regarding communication. I'm sure, you know, having your own YouTube channel or having your own blog or things like that can really help to ameliorate your communication skills. But have you found that some side projects that you've had have had a positive impact on your career? Yeah, I I think the YouTube channel, which started off originally as a frustration that 
pharmacy school stuff and teaching them Mandy. And I, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I just started talking about it because people kept asking me, you know, random pharmacy teachers are like, you got to scale these some ways. So I just started creating content, answering questions. It has helped a good amount in terms of a couple of things. I think the first and foremost is that it's maybe put myself in terms of a personal brand. So sometimes people assist pharmacy informatics content with me because I have a YouTube channel. So it's helped give me some exposure that has, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Along those lines, it leads to opportunities like working with different organizations, consulting for how they can improve their social media presence or character of the pharmacy schools, many of whom have referenced my videos in their curriculums because mm -hmm. no content exists. So I think it's been helpful personally and externally. And even personally, it's like it's definitely helped me figure out how to communicate ideas and teach at a larger scale instead. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's super important. So just to finish off, Brian, looking back at your career, what is one piece of advice you wish you could have given yourself when you started in pharmacy informatics? Yeah, uh, you know, I feel like I get asked this question every now and then I don't know how best to answer it. I usually give the answer of having a mentor, finding a mentor, but I've been able to get a lot of mentors. I have had a lot of mentors in the past that has guided me in the direction that I've gone. So I think if I were to change that, who is sponsor? So. If I were to go back in time or give myself a piece of advice, it probably would be to take risks. Mm -hmm. And this is a little less common and maybe it's a very biased answer because within the pharmacy profession right now, there's a lot of contention and strangeness going on with jobs and job saturation. And I think that most people, and maybe not just specific to pharmacy, but most people would be afraid of taking a risk and learning a completely new specialty or pivoting to a new direction. And I would give two examples. Most pharmacy schools would teach students to go into a retail setting, like a Walgreens or CVS or a hospital setting. And those are the only two options. And then when I went into informatics, people started thinking about that as an alternative pathway. And I was like, oh, but it's a risk. You know, it's not a thing I'm going to talk about. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is my recent job, I pivoted to health tech, which to be objective, I technically left the pharmacy profession as my role is no longer a pharmacy role. And I think it's been very really unique. And so I think that advice is basically taking risks into new areas of interest that you might have because it could keep your mind healthy and sharp. Yeah, go with that. Yeah, I really like that advice. I think it keeps you fresh and gives you new perspectives when you pivot into different uh, areas of life and allows you just to grow your skills in your career. So I really like that advice. So thank you so much, Brian, for being a part of the uh, podcast. Yeah, thanks again. It was super fun. Always enjoy talking with other fellow connoisseurs of the of Max. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you for listening to the Health Analytic Insights Podcast. I'd love to hear from you about topics I should cover in future episodes. Please consider subscribing and leaving a review. Have a wonderful day.